Time graphs are used to measure either the distance that someone is travelling in a given time or the speed with which they are travelling in a given time. Therefore, we'll have two types, our distance time graph and our velocity time graph. So on a distance time graph, you may just have uh, something like that, where for this first period of time, the person, whoever they are, they are travelling at a constant velocity. Then for this period of time, they'll stay where they are. Their distance isn't changing. But then again, they start travelling further again for this last stretch. Here then, as I may have already kind of uh, alluded to, these sections where we're going up, this is where we're representing the speed, the velocity. And we can work out the actual value of that velocity with the gradient. So the gradient equals velocity, or speed if you prefer. For working out that gradient, you're then just using your uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which you may be familiar with from the topics on just straight line graphs. So you'd pick two points on the given bit of graph you're studying. Say, so, okay, how much did they go up? How much did they go across? That divided by that, that gets you the gradient. In this case, that gets you the velocity. The distance then just read off against the y-axis. As for the velocity time graph, if we had the same thing, then here, going this flat and then traveling up again, here, this first section over this given bit of time, what's happening is this person, this vehicle, whatever, is accelerating. Um, their speed, their velocity is increasing constantly over a bit of time. When it goes flat then, this isn't like they're staying still like before. They'd only be staying still if their velocity was on the x-axis was on zero. Here, this is saying it's a constant velocity. They're moving at the same velocity throughout for this bit of time. And then here, they started uh, accelerating again. So, yeah, gradient is acceleration. Now, though, we can also make use of the area under the graph. Uh, the area under here uh, is going to be um, your distance. And the reason for this, if you think about your speed distance time equation, so speed equals distance over time, or velocity of time. So uh, to get the gradient of this line, you did the d coordinates, the uh, distance, divided by the t coordinates, the time. So distance over time, that gave you speed, the velocity. Similarly, this acceleration is found using the equation that acceleration is speed or velocity over time. And here you took your speed values, your velocity values, and you divided them by your time value, speed over time, gave you acceleration, gave you the gradient. But also, if we were to rearrange this first equation here to just get it to distance equals, how you get distance on its own, you would have to move the t over the equal sign. When you do that, its sign changes. It becomes a, a times. So it's speed times time equals distance. Well, uh, if we were to do our velocity, our speed, times our time, that would give us the area. Here, say we were looking at just this rectangle. The height is the v, the width is the t. Together, that's the area. So the area is the distance. Uh, therefore, just when you're doing these questions, you just want to be sure. Is it a distance time graph or a velocity time graph? Because these can then be used to get different things. Distance time can get you the velocity from the gradient. Velocity time can get the acceleration from the gradient and the distance from the area. With that in mind then, if we just say turn to this, where this was a graph we wanted to work with, we'd say, okay, what was the uh, velocity between uh, 9.30 and 10? Um, because this distance is in kilometres, when we're measuring speed involving kilometres, it will usually be kilometres per hour. So instead of taking this as 30 minutes, I'm going to take that as half an hour. The gradient then here, so just from here to here, we've gone up by 5 kilometres in 0 0.5 hours. So 5 divided by 0 0.5, that's going to get us a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. If, however, 
the question asked for the average speed of the whole trip. Uh, we started here actually at five kilometers. We started at some distance away from a given point. Often the questions will start with at zero because you've got your leave point A, go towards point B. But I just want to show technically, both with the distance and the velocity, you can start at a non-zero value. Um, however, if we're saying how far does this thing travel on average um, from where it starts at time zero, if we're ending up at 20 kilometers here, and at time zero we we're already at five, the amount you've travelled is 15. And then in the time, that time is 2 hours. So, the 15 divided by 2, that gives you an average speed of 7.5 kilometres per hour. Lower than what we had before, because there are periods where this person isn't moving, and there's different steepnesses to those sections. If that makes sense. And let's just uh, clear this up and then give you a question of your own. If we were to say that you were going to be leaving at this 9 a.m. time. Now, uh, from 9 a.m. to 9.36 a.m., uh, your speed was 15 kilometers per hour. And then from 9.36 to uh, 10.45, uh, you travelled a further, so your distance equaled 8 kilometres. First of all, draw this on this graph, and then, given that from 10.45 to 11, you travelled a further, uh, sorry, with a further speed of 18 kilometres per hour, work out the distance that you travelled during that last leg. Pause the video, have a go for yourself, I'd advise getting a piece of paper and just drawing out these axes and uh, trying to plot it on, and then press play again when you're ready to compare. So, if between 9 and uh, 9.36, we're going to be travelling at a speed of uh, 15 kilometres per hour. Um, because there was no indication that you had any other starting point, we're going to start from zero. And then here, again, because it's per hour, we need to turn 36 minutes into part of an hour. There were 60 minutes in an hour, so 36 divided by 60, that's going to be the same as three-fifths, or 0 0.6 if you prefer. So when we're working out, okay, how far you're going to travel, what's the distance? Uh, well, uh, distance is going to be speed times time. If your speed is 15 and you're timesing it by three-fifths, that's going to give you a distance of 9. So at uh, 9.36, where here each of these little boxes must be going up in three minutes, because we've got 30 minutes in 10 boxes. So 36 is going to be two boxes along here. And we're going to go up to nine kilometers. Then from uh, 936 to 1045, you traveled eight kilometers. So if you're at nine and you add another eight, that's going to bring you up uh, to 17. And that's at 1045. So that's going to be here in the middle of the 1030 and the 11. So that's, yeah, at. 17. Uh, from here, you then just join up your two straight lines. So join that up as a straight line here, and join that up as a straight line here. That is these two bits of information just represented on the distance time graph. Um, then, just uh, for this last bit, where between 10.45 and 11, you travelled at uh, 18 kilometres per hour, how far did you travel? Well, again, we need to turn this into part of an hour, because it's kilometres per hour. 15 minutes, that's a quarter of an hour. Um, and yet again, just like we had up here, to get the distance, uh, we're going to have to speed times time. So 18 times a quarter, well, that's going to be um, 4.5 kilometres travelled in just what would have been 
this last bit here. If we're okay with that, then let's go on to a actual paper question. Now, the velocity time graphs or the uh, distance time graphs don't always have to be made up of just straight lines. In fact, in reality, they wouldn't be for the most part, because uh, just because of real world factors, your speed isn't going to increase perfectly. Your, um, the distance you travel is gonna, um, not going to uh, always be perfectly uh, constant in terms of the rate it's going up. So here we have a curve for the speed. So starting at zero, zero. Uh, as person Carol in the race is going to speed up up until around seven seconds, and then she's going to slow down again. So first of all, wants to calculate an estimate for the gradient of the graph when t is four. Well, before we just usually would have just found the straight line that uh, exists at that point where t is four, and you just pick two points on that same bit of line. And just okay, difference in y, difference in x. This isn't a straight line though. So what we have to do is we have to make one. On your actual paper, you would use a ruler um, to draw a tangent. So you're trying to draw a straight line that touches the curve at that specific point um, and tries to match the gradient as much as uh, possible. So here, let's say that was our tangent, and we could therefore read off this is a point here, and this is a point here, with that line's gradient, as I say, matching the curve at the moment when t is 4 to then just read down, uh, how much we went up and how much we went across. So here this is 10, this is 6, uh, so that's a difference of 4. Here this is at 6, this is at 2, so that's also a distance, uh, a difference of 4. So speed over time, so 4 over 4, that gets a gradient of 1. Now, describe fully what this answer represents. Well, it represents the acceleration at that instantaneous moment of uh, t equals 4. That acceleration will be completely different at every subsequent point because it's bending. So it's just at that moment uh, it has that acceleration. Carol has that acceleration. Finally then, explain why this answer is only an estimate. Well, it's only an estimate uh, because we can't guarantee we've drawn this line perfectly with the same gradient as the curve at that point. So we've tried our best, but we can't guarantee uh, that the gradients match. Just one other thing um, that I want to mention before we wrap up here. Uh, and that's how, again, with a curved uh, speed time graph, how we can get uh, the uh, distance. Uh, traveled. Now again, usually we would have just, okay, we could break it up into uh, maybe uh, like rectangles and triangles, or if you're happy to, a trapezium. Just as a side note, if you need reminding, the area of the trapezium, if we have two parallel sides and then just some diagonals between them, uh, it will be half a b, a, a plus b times h, where a and b are your parallel sides and your h is the distance between them. So like for instance, if we just go back up uh, here, um, with this, if we had uh, just considered up until this time here, what that area is, you've got a parallel side here, a parallel side here, and this is a distance between them. So you'd add up that time, add up that time, halve them and times by the distance traveled, or you could just make this a rectangle, this a triangle, and add them up afterwards. Here, uh, no, we can't do exactly the same thing. So what we would have to do is make some uh, trapeziums for us to work with. Now, this is only again going to be an estimate, just like the gradient is an estimate, this area will be an estimate. But if we uh, split this up, say every two, so we made strips, like this. Um, the, what this is doing, as you can see, uh, is creating our either rectangles or trapeziums or triangles, however uh, you want to look at them. So if we then just join up our uh, lines here, just to make it clearer. So this here we could actually just think of as a triangle because it goes down to zero here. 
So you would have your half of base times height. Uh, your height is 5, your uh, base is 2, so 5 times 2 is 10, half that is 5. Here, this is again a trapezium, but this and this, the two vertical lines, they are your parallel sides. So uh, they're going to be your a and b, and this here in the time, that's now your h. So if this is again 5, and this here is 8, 5 add 8 is 13, um, half of that uh, is going to be uh, 6.5, and then times that by the uh, distance between times by 2, 6.5 times 2 gets you back to 13. You'll notice with all of these when we do the trapeziums, because you're going to have a half, and then the height is 2, they're just going to cancel, so you might as well just add up to parallel sides. But if you want to be more comfortable, yeah, do the whole formula. Here, A is 8, and B we could read off as approximately uh, 9.6. So in this case, uh, 8 and 9.6 uh, is going to give us 17.6, again, halved times by 2, we cancel out. This one, we will just think of as a rectangle, uh, because this is flat. So just uh, base times height, this base again, oh sorry, the height again of 9.6, base of 2, so 9.6 times 2, that's going to give us uh, 19. 2. And then lastly, these parallel sides, the 9.6 once more, and the 8 again. Actually, this is going to be the same, isn't it? So it's going to be 17.6. You would then add up all of those uh, values, and that would give you an estimated total distance of 72.4 metres. So yeah, if it's a curve, um, and you want to estimate the area, the question may even specify, use this many uh, strips. So we're going to refer to these as strips. Break them down into either triangles or rectangles or trapeziums, work out the individual areas, and then add them up to get an estimate for the total. Only an estimate, though, because as we can see, even what we've done here, that's missed out this bit here, that's missed out this here, this here, and so on.